everyone, my name is Chloe and welcome to the start of another weekly reading vlog. So today is Monday, it is about 2 o'clock and I just thought I'd get on. Today has been a bad news bears kind of day. I look like I've been up forever and that's because I have. Um, Annie is still waking up every like two and a half hours and she has been getting up now since the time change. She has been getting up for the day at 5 and being like miserable because she's so tired and so she's just grouchy and then like today I couldn't get her to nap until almost 10 o'clock and so it has just been a day and then we went um a Ainsley got up Jeremy's out of town so a Ainsley got up and we finally got breakfast got everything done went to the bathroom and put on shoes to go to the park and so then we I put her in the car and she's like kind of squirming so I was like do you need to go to the bathroom no so then I say, okay, we'll go to the park. So then we get halfway there and she has to go to the bathroom. So we um, went to this place and went to the bathroom, like a building, because they had a porta potty at the park, but we were like, um, I knew they did, but we weren't there yet. And so I was like, let's just go into an indoor place. And so we went in, then went to the park and nobody was there except like this man who was sitting at, a, a, at one of the like benches just staring at the park and it just made me feel a little uncomfortable. So I said, okay, let's go to a different park. So then by the time we get to the second park, it's like 10 or yeah, 1045, maybe 1030. I don't know. And we had to be home by like 1115 to feed Annie because I didn't bring any sort of cover or anything to feed her. So yeah, 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 yeah. So we went and we played. Well, we got there to play, and two other kids walk up, and like nobody else was there except these two other kids. And these kids are hacking up a lung. Like they're 15 months old, and their mother brought them to the park sick. And so I was then like, okay, let's go. So we came home, and of course, like she did so good. I mean, leaving the park after being gone like 15 minutes, I'm sure was really disappointing, but she did so good. So we came home, and I filled up our sink. Um, she got a bath bath bomb for Halloween, and so um, it was in a witch's cauldron, and so it was so cute. And so she played with the bath bomb in the water and like washed all of her toys and just washed stuff and played in the water and then took a little lunch break and then she played some more and so now it's finally nap time and here I am. So as far as reading goes, I finished uh, Ladies Night by Mary Kay Andrews and I'm going to give this three and a half stars. It was really cute. Um, this is about a girl, a woman named Grace who she is a very popular blogger and her blog is like lifestyle I would say. She does cooking, she does interior design, she does all sorts of stuff. And she is a very, very, very well-known blogger. So much so that she has an assistant and her husband is like her manager. Well, she walks in on her husband having an affair with her assistant. And so she just kind of goes a little berserk and takes his really nice car and drives it into their swimming pool and just like it loses her mind. And it was so funny. And this book in general was really funny. So she, like, they go to get a divorce and the judge requires her to go to this group therapy thing with this divorce therapist kind of person. I don't know what it was, but... And so she goes, and the therapist is definitely off. She, like, falls asleep at their first one, and we don't really know what's going on with her throughout the book. And so it kind of becomes ladies' night. The girls, the, like, women that have all been ordered to go to this group start going to Grace's mother's uh, bar and grill and having drinks and talking instead. And so it's just, it's really funny, really cute. There's a guy in the group named Wyatt, and he has a six-year-old boy named Bo that is adorable, and he's got an ex that also left him for another guy. And so Wyatt and Grace um, bond, and they have a romance that was just really sweet and cute, and I love the addition of Bo, the little kid. And overall, I just, I really like this. The reason it's not hired, like, I thought I was going to maybe give it four like a strong four, but I don't think this is going to have very much lasting power in my brain. Um, it is a big book. It's almost 500 pages. And so parts of it, it didn't feel ever really slow, but there's just not a whole lot going on. It's very much a character study. And I don't know, I just feel like this probably won't be super memorable. We do meet all the other ladies in the divorce group and kind of hear their stories. And so that was nice, but none of them are super strong, like secondary characters. So overall, I really like this. It does switch back and forth too between first person and third person. And that was a little like jarring and awkward at times. Um, 
So I don't know. This I thought was still really good. Mary Kay Andrews is a weird mix of like women's fiction, romance, and mystery. And I would say this one is one of her lighter mysteries. Like there's not a whole lot of the only mystery really is um, what's going on with the therapist. And then also Grace has to like reestablish herself because her husband has destroyed her career and taken it from her basically because he is her manager and had everything in his name, I guess. And so he takes it from her and she tries to like rebuild herself and somebody's sabotaging her. So there's a little bit of mystery of like what's going on there. But other than that, this is um, pretty light on the mystery, I would say. So then I picked up um, Love Does by Bob Goff. And this one I have on audio from Hoopla. So if you're interested in it, it is on Hoopla. And it's like six hours, maybe even less. I'm not sure. Um, and it says, Discover a Secretly Incredible Life in an Ordinary World. So at the basis of it, I love that idea. And this, um, I'll tell you, I gave it three stars. I really liked the idea of this book. This is talking about love does change things. Love does um, action. Like love is an, a verb. And this is talking about loving God, loving each other, and loving yourself. All of, all of those types of love are really important. And so he's talking about that. But the whole like subtext of discover a secretly incredible life in an ordinary world, that's where this part kind of lost me because he is giving examples from his life. And now if you don't know who Bob Goff is, he is a very larger than life personality. He is a lawyer, but he also is like the first one to cry at a sappy movie. And he is very comical, very like he's so funny to watch or hear. And just he had he has a school in Uganda. Like the things that he does are outrageous. I mean, it really outrageous. Like he does things that um, the ordinary person does not do. So I felt like this one while I understood the point, and this had a couple of like definitely highlightable passages, the whole message of like embodying love and acting love in the day to day was kind of lost in this because for me, I do a version of the same thing every single day. You know, I get up, I take care of kids, I go to bed, and you know, it's basically the same thing over and over. I'm not starting a school in Uganda, I'm not saving people's lives. I'm raising children, but I'm not doing anything so extraordinary or so out of the ordinary. I guess that's probably a better way of saying it. Like my life is very ordinary. So how do I bring some of these principles into the ordinary? It does talk about it, but the whole context of the book and the examples of the book are very, um, very over the top, much like Bob Goff himself. So I'm giving it three stars. I don't know that this was the most like inspiring book that I have ever read. I think it might be my first Bob Goff. And yet I have heard him speak quite a few times and I love him as a speaker. I'm not sure how I will feel about him as an author. I have one more of his book called Everybody Always and I want to read that this month for Nonfiction November. But so far, this is the first nonfiction November read, and I enjoyed it. Um, maybe reading it on audio, too, did a disservice. I don't really know. Like I said, there's some highlightable passages, which I did not save because I was um, listening on audio. But uh, this is told in a funny way. It's a very over-the-top story. It's entertaining. It's just not quite the inspiration level I was looking for. So... That's everything. Um, I'm also reading All Through the Night by Mary Higgins Clark. And this is a story about, um, uh, it's it's Elvira and Willie, I think is his name. And I think they have appeared in multiple of her books. I don't know that I've ever read a Mary Higgins Clark. And so I, I don't know them and that's fine. But this one is about them. Um, they are involved in a situation where a woman has died and she has left her house to uh, this one of their sisters to run this like after school program for kids. They live in New York and so th she had been running this place where kids could come after school and just hang out, have a snack and have a safe place basically because they're underprivileged kids that don't have anywhere to go and so they come but they are getting shut down so this woman who passes leaves her home and says you can operate here. 
And then um, somebody else shows up and says, hey, she changed her will right before she died and does not want that to happen. So you can't do it. And so it's Willie and Elvira trying to figure out what's going on. And also the like prologue of the book is a woman leaving her baby on the doorsteps of a church. So I don't know yet how that plays into the story or where this baby is in all of this. If this is historical, if it's present, if I don't know where they're all going to intersect. But so far, I'm really liking it. It's like a 200 and something page book. It's really short. I just only have it physically and I just haven't had the time or energy to um, physically read very much. So I haven't gotten it done, but I should in the next couple days. So that's what I'm reading. I don't know what I'll pick up on ebook or audio. I don't know. So I will update later and let you know what I pick up and what we're up to. Hey everyone, I'm really hoping this works because uh, iPhone did an update and so now um, like the little timer that says how long I've been talking is red and I think that's normal. Um, I don't know, like I, I hate phone updates because it seems like things always change and then like it's just weird. I don't, I don't know. I don't like change. <laughs> but anyway, um, so last night I picked up The Copper Beach by Maeve Benchy. And Maeve Benchy is one of those authors that I'm like not sure if I should break up with or continue trying or what should happen. And this one I ended up DNFing at like 30%, I think, because I was reading it and it, the premise sounds really interesting. It's about this school, I think it's a Catholic school that is right, like there's this beech tree, um, B-E-E-C-H tree right out front. And so like these eight students carve their initials in the tree and it's the eight students stories. Sounds really interesting. Well, I kind of misunderstood and it's really just short stories of like each kid from childhood to adulthood. And I liked them, but the, sh the stories were so short that then I was like, I, I don't know. I mean, I wanted more of certain stories and less of other stories. I read three or four of them. So maybe I read close to half of the book. I don't really know, but I liked it. I just don't really like short stories. I think they do. Like I did some Google searching and it looks like they do all connect in some way, but I just was not interested enough. Um, because covering eight people's like life story in a short story just was like, kind of what's the point to me, but I am not a fan of short stories. And so that's that I DNF that one. So then I picked up the debutante divorcee, uh, divorcee, whatever by Plum Sykes. And I read this one. Um, I have it on audio from Hoopla and it was like six hours and I ended up reading it at three times speed because one, you could, and two, it was just not good. I haven't rated it yet. I think I'll probably give it two stars. It's about this woman who is like a newlywed and meets this other woman who is divorced and she's having like a divorce party and um, like there's all, she's the debutante divorcee. So she is just the socialite that like treats men like trash. And she, um, has this big, like I said, divorce party. And, um, like the whole conversation around marriage is not great. Like divorce is very, 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 um, idolized in this book, which is fine. Um, I mean, that's not why I gave it two stars, but then the main character is so paranoid the whole time and like she is so paranoid that her husband is cheating on her and they're newlyweds and she is like just like over the top it was so annoying like just ask him or just come out and like and I don't know I mean she had reasons to think like st stuff he was doing was sketchy but if she would have just asked him like what he was doing it would have made all of the problems disappear. And I'm just like, it was annoying to be that paranoid. And she was kind of like planning what she was going to do after him and stuff. And it's like, wait, you just got married. Like, I don't know. And I didn't like the debutante divorcee character. Um, and like, there were a bunch of really weird relationships between her other girlfriends and their men or lack of men or whatever. And I don't know. I just, I didn't care for that at all. So 
now I'm like, okay, this project of reading my shelves is going great. However, like there are some serious duds on there, which makes sense why I left them. Not at, the Copper Beach, I think, has an audience for sure. And like if they, Maeve Benji, like I said, I'm iffy on her. Well, the writing in this was very good and it was very engaging. I just don't like short story and it felt like trying to do a lot in a short amount of time. And so that one, I think, has its audience. This debutante divorcee thing, I just, I didn't care for it all. So um, they compare, like, the, I think there was a comparison between that and, like, Lauren Weisenberger or Weisberger or something. She wrote The Devil, um, the Devil Who Wore Prada and those kind of books. And it is very similar vein as those, just even worse if possible. So that's that. I don't know what I'll pick up next. I think a Christmas book is what I need to like get me in the, get me in a better mood. I don't know. Um, so as far as life goes this morning, we went, I, I can't think if anything happened last night since I updated, probably not. Um, this morning we went to like go to the zoo. So I hyped Ainsley up because yesterday she had asked if we could go and you guys know yesterday was a bad news bears day and like no we weren't going to go to the zoo because we could have barely walked in the door before we like had to leave so today I was like okay we're going to get up we're going to do what we need to do and we're going to go to the zoo so we are so excited uh last time we went she was kind of freaked out by the monkeys but this time she wanted to go see the monkeys she wanted to go see the flamingos that she had loved like she was just jazzed. And so was I because it's a beautiful day today. It is like 70 or 75. Like it is gorgeous. So I was just excited. And like at the zoo, then that means a lot of walking, which is good for both of us. And it also keeps Annie asleep in the stroller. And so whatever, like we're pumped and we're talking about it all during breakfast, whatever. So we get there to the zoo and it has this huge sign that says now open daily 12 to 4. What? What? That does not make any sense to me at all because like bigger kids are in school, littler kids are napping. Like who are you trying to serve from 12 to 4? Um, and like I can understand having winter hours potentially, but 12 to 4 feels so limited. And I don't know, our zoo, it's not a great zoo as it is. And then like they were shut for months and months with COVID and they did not offer like an extension for those of us who have like year passes. They didn't say like, we'll extend your expiration date. They didn't do any of that. And now with this 12 to four, like uh, my in-laws always get us the passes for Christmas. And so I'm going to tell them like, don't waste your money because we'll never go 12 to four because we eat lunch between 12 and one. And then she naps hopefully from two to four. And so, um, I don't know. I'm going to see if I can like email the zoo director or something and just see if that's like a permanent thing or if that's something that's going to change or what. So I don't know. So then we went to the park we tried to go to yesterday and there was a mom and her two little boys and one of her boys was five and then the other was like a week older than Ainsley. And so that was really fun. They were very sweet out, like outgoing boys and they, like, I walked up and they're like, hi, what's your name? And before we had even done anything, they were just very sweet kids. And they were very much boys. Like, they were just running all over the place. And so it really kind of pushed Ainsley out of her shell a little bit. And I love when that happens. That's why I love going to the park is just because it, it kind of gets her out of her shell and helps her to, like, be a little more adventurous. So that's what we did this morning. Then we came home and um, now we're going to eat lunch and then take naps and that kind of stuff. So yeah, I will check in later once I have started something and have an update as reading goes. Hey everyone, it is Wednesday at like 2.30 maybe, I don't know. Um, today has been a day. So this morning we got up and um, just did like the normal routine of getting breakfast, all that kind of stuff. And I asked Jeremy if he would take the kids to the park because it's a beautiful day outside. And I had so much stuff in the fridge that was about to go bad that I needed to cook that I just haven't done because it's really hard to do with both of them um, throughout the day. And then it, it's stuff like coleslaw that like doesn't really, I just was craving coleslaw and bought the like cabbage. And so I needed to make that and then we had a bunch of bananas and so I didn't, I needed to make like some bread or something. So, um, 
it was like stuff that wasn't like dinner food and so I haven't made it and so I just said will you take them to the park and then by the time he got them out the door because it's just hard to do it was like 10 15 and so then I just went crazy and did as much as I could in like an hour and a half two hours and so I made muffins like a whole bunch of muffins two different kinds I made coleslaw, I made some oatmeal, um, banana oatmeal, and then I made some um, like ground meat, but it's Boca Burger or Morningstar or something. I can't remember which brand it was, but because tomorrow we're having uh, Mexican lasagna, so I went ahead and cooked that today so it would come together a little bit quicker. And I just did that kind of stuff um, just as fast as I could like a crazy lady. So that's what I did. And then I came home and, or they came home and um, the plan was to do lunch. And then I was going to run to Target because I got Ainsley a snowsuit and accidentally had it shipped to store. And so I went, I was going to go pick it up. But then, I mean, it just didn't go to plan. So then finally I ended up taking Annie to Target with me and she screamed the whole way there, the whole way in Target, the whole way home. And then I came home and it was like two. Yeah, so it's probably like three o'clock because it was like two o'clock and she hadn't eaten or I hadn't eaten. And so Jeremy held her while I ate something really quick. And then I just finally got her down. And so now both kids are down. I think it's probably three or shortly thereafter. But I came outside to film this clip so um i wouldn't wake anybody up because i like always said i did not want to have tiptoe kids that you have to just tiptoe around but i have tiptoe kids i like we tried to be really intentional with both of them about being noisy while they were sleeping like when they're babies but then they just become so volatile that you start tiptoeing and then you get stuck in a situation where you have to tiptoe so that's where we're at um and today, though, it felt so good to, like, get all that stuff made. The only thing I didn't get made was enchilada sauce. I um, make my own and then put it in mason jars and freeze it. And I have been out for a long time, so we've been doing, like, just white enchiladas or no enchiladas. And enchiladas are, like, one of my favorite foods, so I really need to make more sauce. I just haven't done it. So, um, as far as reading goes, though, that's why you're here. I have finished two things. I finished All Through the Night by Mary Higgins Clark, which is the book I was reading physically. And it was so good. I gave it, well, I gave it three and a half stars. It was very good, but it was very short. It was like 250 pages, and the pages were small pages. And so this is, it's marked as the third in the Willie and Elvira series, which I don't know if that's like, a series I mean it's not a series you need to read all of them because like I was perfectly fine just picking this book up but they're an older couple and I think it just would have been fun to know them even better and like have some history and I think that may have helped I don't know like his sister is a care well let me just tell you what it's about so um, the opening chapter is this woman, she's like, I think she's 18 or something, and she takes her baby, and brand new newborn baby, and leaves it at the door of a church because she cannot be a mother. So she leaves it, and then it cuts to Willie and Elvira. So they are an older couple about to go to a funeral of a friend named Bessie, and they go, and Bessie had left her house to um, her sister. So, Willie's sister ran this, like, after-school program for, like, kind of underprivileged youth. So, they would just have a safe place to go after school. And that is getting shut down. So, they, the house that um, Bessie just left, the sister says, hey, come run your thing here. So, great. The will, like, that was stated in the will. Everything's good. Whatever. Well, then the people who are renting part of Bessie's house say, oh, no, like right before she died, she signed this secondary will that says no kids. It all gets left to them, the tenants. So Elvira, um, she takes it on herself to be like kind of a sleuth, figure out what happened, which will is correct. And um, it's really fun. Like, I think she I forget what she said her career was, but now she's like retired and does like these amateur sleuthing type things and so it was really fun I would love to read more of Willie and Elvira because they were a cute couple and then and, and I love seeing older people and so and then of course the story of the baby um connects and it's just it was really cute and it was all very Christmassy so they are throwing a Christmas pageant with these kids and it was Christmassy and it was set in New York and the New York Christmas is like my favorite setting of all time so I loved it. So that's what I finished. And then I also finished um, 
a timeless Christmas. And this one I got from NetGalley on audio. So thank you to NetGalley and the publisher for sending it to, or for allowing me to read it um, that way. But I'm not sure, like the book was published in 2018 and the audiobook I think came out 2019. So I'm not sure why it's on NetGalley. If any of you guys know why that might be, let me know. Um, it archives soon, but I don't know. So I listened to it and it's so cute. The publisher is Hallmark Publishing. So I'm guessing this is a Hallmark movie somewhere. So it's about this girl named Megan. She works in this museum, like, of an old mansion of this guy named Charles who was an inventor in, like, 1902 or something like that. And so she works in this mansion, and then one day Charles shows up. And Charles is all sorts of confused because it's present day. There's all these people, like, dressed up to be, like, him and his fiance and stuff. They're, like, role-playing what it would have been like at that time. And so he's like, where am I? What's going on? What is all this crazy technology? And so Megan kind of helps him figure out like how to live in present day. So of course they have a romance and he was an inventor back in the day. And so he tries to figure out like he, my point is he's a very, very intelligent guy and like um, mechanical, I guess. So he tries to figure out a way to transport himself back to 1902. So the story is Megan and Charles and their kind of romance as they go on these adventures trying to teach him about present day as well as try to figure out how to send him back. So, super cute. I'm giving it four stars. The Christmassy vibes were good. This one also might be in or, in and around New York, but I I think I'm making that up. I don't know. Um, so it was really cute and really Christmassy and just a great book. So if you have not heard of that one, I would say definitely check it out. Um... And then, other than that, I picked up Sacred Marriage by Gary Chapman. And this is nonfiction about um, how to, I forget what the little subtext is, but it's um, how to see your marriage and, like as a tool to come closer to God. And it's not about having a better marriage directly. It's about like being a better person and, and being more in love with God and how your marriage is like the prime time tool to do that because your marriage is your most intimate relationship. It's the most frustrating relationship. Um, it really tests you. And so I am loving it. In fact, I think I've got it on audio from Hoopla and I think I might stop listening to it and go read it physically or do them both simultaneously because, um, like I have it on and I'm listening to it, but like I, this is one that I think I want to annotate. And I actually asked Jeremy if he would read it with me. And he is not a reader, as you guys know, but it's actually his Hoopla account that it's on. So I don't know if we can both listen to it, um, like how that would work, because it would be my spot and then his spot. And I don't know how that would work, but um, so that's really good. And so I think I'm going to end this vlog here because I have a very special project coming up this next week. So... This is a shorter one. I'm still going to wait to release it on Monday as I always do. So um, it'll be a little delayed. But that is everything. If you've read any of the books that I read, let me know what you think. And uh, I hope you are having a wonderful fall or spring, where whatever side of the world you're on. And that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And we'll see you in the next one.